Hello, everybody. This is Michael Lombardo. Welcome to Awaken Live. Sorry we went on a few minutes late here today. That happens sometimes. But let me go to Facebook really quick, and I am going to go ahead and share this. So if you just tuned in right now, I'm sorry if you guys clicked on a different link and you couldn't get um, joined to the broadcast here. But now we are live, and I'm just going to take a minute to share this on my personal page for some of my friends who haven't quite migrated over to my ministry page yet. So I just shared it on there. In the meantime, you can just comment at the bottom. Let me know where you're watching from. All right. Let me know your name, where you're watching from. You could share this. You could send likes, all that good stuff. Let me see here. All right. And now it's, we have also an Awaken Live group. Um, where you'll get all kinds of updates about Awaken Live there, and I am posting it there now. All right. Posting. Okay, looks like we're good to go there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you guys doing? Michael Lombardo, if you're just tuning in now, feel free to comment at the bottom. I have an incredible guest with me today. Um, some of you guys may know her, but before I do that, let me just share with you my book, Immersed in His Glory, A Supernatural Guide to Experiencing and Abiding in God's Presence, released with Destiny Image Publishers. And so if you share this at the bottom, if you tag a friend, it really helps us get this out to more people. But I'm also going to be seeing who shared the broadcast, who is interacting, who did that. And I'm going to give away a copy of Immersed in His Glory during today's broadcast. Okay, I've been liking these giveaways it's really in my heart to just bless people with this book, bless people with this message. So if you share this, especially with Facebook and its algorithms now, especially with pages, sometimes it's hard. It doesn't reach everyone it's supposed to reach. So if you share this, then we'll get you a copy of Immersed in His Glory. This is my heart message. It's about not only experiencing the presence of God, but living there 24-7. We have access to the Father through what Jesus Christ accomplished for us. The Holy Spirit lives in us to make Jesus and the Father real to us. And so practical tools on how to experience and abide in the very presence of God. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Carol, all you guys who are watching, watching from Chicago, watching from Connecticut. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And now let me share with you a little bit about my guest. Her name is Donna De Silva. If you guys ever heard of Sozo and Inner Healing and, and that deliverance ministry, um, she is the founder of that. But Donna De Silva and her husband, Stephen, have ministered out of Bethel Church. A lot of you guys know Bethel Church, Bill Johnson, Chris Vallotton, um, and the amazing worship that comes out of Bethel. For over 20 years, they're preaching, speaking internationally, and authoring books. Whether training, sozo, preaching, shifting atmospheres, or ministering prophetically, Donna releases people, churches, and cities into new vision and freedom. No matter how traumatized or no matter how traumatic the wounding, Donna ministers with authority and gentleness, imparting hope and healing. And we need that. We need hope. We need healing. We need to be whole. We need to arise and shine. We need the light of Jesus to shine through us. The enemy wants to trap us in darkness, but Jesus wants to free us so we can truly be a light in this world, salt in the earth. And so I'm going to have Donna here on the show. How you doing, Donna? Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you on. I know you're busy. You got a lot going on. When was this book, Shifting Atmospheres, released? It's been out about a year now, I think, okay. since I think it was July of last year. So it's good. July of last year. Okay, so Shifting Atmospheres, Discerning and displacing the spiritual forces around you. And then you also just recently came out with a devotional that kind of goes with it. Yeah. So the devotional is actually, there's a, a glossary where you can pick the day that you want to look at. So you don't have to go in order. Um, and so you can see what are you struggling with and what God can do for you in that situation. So yeah, it's fun. That one's right. just about a, two weeks. This one came out two weeks ago. So 90 Days to Victorious Spiritual Warfare, Prayers, Declarations, and Strategies for Shifting Atmosphere. So really, they go together. And today, Destiny Image was nice enough to send me um, an extra copy of this book. So I'm going to be giving away a copy of the devotional here today. You can get Shifting Atmospheres on your website, I'm sure, 
as well as Amazon or anywhere books are sold. But um, you can get this as well in those places. But I'm going to send a free copy. So if you share this at the bottom or if you tag friends on this broadcast, at the end of the show, I'm going to be looking through all the shares. I'm going to pray. And we're going to, it's going to be put into, I'm going to be able to pick out people to win a copy of my book, Immerse in His Glory, as well as Prayers, Declarations, and Strategies, this devotional. So I, I'm excited to talk to you today about your book, Shifting Atmospheres. I know this to be really true in my life. This is something the Lord has taught me. But before we dive into the meat of this subject, can you just tell people a little bit about you? I know I shared some, but what are you passionate about? What's your heart? Yeah, I'm passionate about seeing the church actually walk in freedom instead of just pretending they are. <laughs> so everything that I do actually revolves around getting in and, and making sure we actually are walking in the freedom that Christ paid for. So that's my passion. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's awesome. And we need more people to teach. We need teachers in the body of Christ that could open these things up. And not only teachers, but people that know how to draw people into an encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit so that they can truly, things can come up in their hearts. They can truly walk in freedom. And so that's that's awesome. And so how did this journey begin with shifting atmospheres? Because this is a message, I don't hear a whole lot of people preaching it. Um, this is something I've kind of learned just with the prophetic and with the discerning of spirits. And it's been a journey kind of learning this message. But how did shifting atmospheres start with you? And maybe tell us a little bit about what shifting atmospheres is. What what do you mean by atmospheres and how do we do that? Yeah, it was probably about eight years ago when I actually taught the first teaching on shifting atmospheres. And it came from spending a lot of time in Sozo's where I realized that people came in with a broadcast, I would say, or with with a um, uh, something, they signal they were giving off. And usually it was hopelessness and discouragement. Yeah. And I learned that if I partner with that, we're not going to get them free. And so yeah. it. After years of looking at that, we, we built up a, um, a vocabulary around it. And so it was strange when I, I, when I shared it the first time, the church was like, oh, this makes perfect sense, but it's not language we've had. And so yeah. actually it's learning how to pick up the broadcast. I have found so many people come up to me and they're like, oh, I thought I was crazy. And I realized yeah. no, I'm just hearing different radio stations that are going on around me. So it is very liberating. I'm not saying you don't have to own your sin. This is not, oh, the devil made me do it. But it yeah. is turning off the signals that are coming from the atmosphere that aren't from God. And actually, yeah. um, me changing the channel protects me, but it doesn't give you another channel. So the next step is we turn the channel, and it looks like I see you. I'm not partnering with you. So like anger's coming at me. I see you, anger. I'm not going to partner with you. And then yeah. we... We release a new channel, basically the best way to describe it, so that other people can tune in. So then we release peace or we release confidence or, you know, kind of like when we were rushing around today and we just started praying. It's like you're releasing the opposite. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very powerful. Amen. And so this is something that I would ask just because we're just laying the foundation here. So when you mean, when, when you say broadcasts, like picking up different broadcasts, can you just bring a little bit more? clarity to that like what what are the different broadcasts that 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 we as believers can pick up well heaven is broadcasting and those broadcasts are like god's in a good mood uh, god is good uh you know all things are possible through christ jesus um so so we have a lot of heavenly broadcasts that are coming but we also have broadcasts from the enemy like um god doesn't like you he's not for you he loves everybody but you. And those, mm -hmm. those are things the enemy is broadcasting. But then we as people broadcast as well. So when I walk in a room, I actually release what I believe about myself into the room. <laughs> and so there's all kinds of broadcasts. And so you can be in a room full of people and picking up so many different comments and you think it's you. And, um, it's funny to realize, oh, wait a minute, I didn't walk into this room with this belief system. So yeah. I, it's really powerful to realize. Yeah, a lot of the times, you know, you walk past somebody who's carrying a really strong atmosphere, demonic, some kind of oppression, and then you start feeling the same thoughts and feelings. You think, what's wrong with me? I'm not, I'm not a person that's prone to depression. I actually have a pretty wild story. When I, when I first got saved, I walked into a church and there was a guest minister, it was a new church. And I was just standing there. I was only saved two or three years. 
And as I was standing there, this young girl came up to me, 12, 13 years old, and she had pigtails and she was playing with her pigtails and she was just like, oh yeah, so what are you eating? What are you doing? And I'm like, I got a weird vibe from her and I was kind of like, yeah, all right. And I just shut the conversation down and walked away. And then during worship, my mind started to get flooded with perverse thoughts. And I'm like, I'm like, that's not like me. I don't, I don't think these thoughts. And I was fighting and I was raging with it in prayer. I'm like, God, this is disgusting. Why am I thinking these things? And then the Lord told me, he said, that's not you. It's the spirit that was on that girl. And then I was like, are you, are you serious? Wow. So I began to pray for her. But then during the preaching, there was a guest minister from Africa and he was a really great preacher. And he actually, he wasn't trying to make a show out of it, but he was preaching. And then he laid hands on her and he said, she taught about like just in tongues really fast. And then he walked away. Like he didn't want to make a show out of it. She yeah. ran, she ran out of, of the, of the, of the service. And she came back in later when the preaching was done sweating sweating like she just got delivered in the bathroom and so but for me that was just one of those moments of like wow sometimes I, I i get thoughts and i automatically think it's myself but it's something happening around me it is and we have to, and if if you don't know it's not you then you will battle you yeah right? so then you're trying to find out what's the open door what's the sin in my life and the enemy's got you spinning so much that you actually aren't able to take care of what really is going on. Like this poor girl needed delivered. Yeah. No, that was yeah. I'm really happy that he did that in a kind way. In a kind way. Mm -hmm. People are like, get out and screaming and yelling. And then the person's, you know, embarrassed. So that was really cool. That was fun. Yeah. I was really impressed by that. He just took his authority and moved on. Didn't make a show out of it. Didn't abuse the girl at all or make her look stupid. And so, but even I was just listening to Georgian Banoff was speaking with uh, the lead singer of Flyleaf. And she said how she took her three-year-old daughter on tour or son on tour with her. And, um, and how like for the first time, it was like three-year-old daughter on tour, but there's a lot of depressed kids that, that were on these tours, even though Flyleaf is Christian and they're singing a Christian message. There's still a lot of unbelievers that come. And they said that her son was three years old saying, I don't like myself. And he was scraping his wrist up against some sharp toys. And how she began to explain to him because she had, because she has a discerning of spirits yep. and she began to understand this. She said, you're picking up on what all of these other people are experiencing. They don't love themselves. You know, they, they don't value themselves, but we need to pray. She said for these people around us that are experiencing this, this is not you. And then she led her little boy in a prayer in a prayer to pray. And he began to weep and pray for these people that don't love themselves. And then she said he never suffered with that again. And he began to learn how to turn that into prayer. Yeah, I think it's so important that as parents, we talk about this stuff with our children. Because yeah. they feel it, they feel it. But if they don't know what to do with it, they think it's themselves. And I mean, adults think it's themselves. But if we know and we're able to talk about it, that's brilliant. Because her son or daughter, did you say? Son, yeah, I believe it's her son, yeah. Her son um, probably is an intercessor, you know, yeah. and, and <laughs> Else he's he's figured out how to pick up from people. And so yeah. she really just diverted a huge mess in their lives because this kid's going to have conversation now with mom about how he's feeling and whose is it. And yeah, that's that was wonderful. Yeah, that's it's huge. so important that we pay attention to what is ours and what is not ours, because we can spend so much time wearing ourselves out um, and, and doing destructive things to ourselves if we mm -hmm. don't know um, what is ours and what is not ours. Yeah. And do you think specifically, because I know, especially if you feel something, if you're a feeler and you're always feeling people's emotions and feeling the atmosphere and what's going on, do you think that's specifically related to the gift of the discerning of spirits and certain people have that in a stronger way? Or do you think that this is something we all can grow in as believers? Discernment is something we all have access to. Hebrews 5.14 tells us that solid food is for the mature. That because mm -hmm. of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. So mm -hmm. I think we all have different giftings. I think we all have um, greater anointings in different areas, but we all have the same Holy Spirit. And yeah. so, you know, like I, I have a certain gifting. Um, my pastor has another gifting. Chris Valton has another yeah. gifting. So you see the strength in them. Yeah. But we can all pray for the sick and watch them healed. We can all do deliverance. We can all, um, I think it's our lack of belief that we can do it that blocks us in so many areas. Yes. So, um, I do think you have to learn um, also mm -hmm. at the same time to practice. And as you practice, you get better and better at it. 
Uh, for me, it came from talking with my friends, like, what are you sensing? What are you hearing? Because man, this is weird. Is something going on? And like, oh yeah. And so we just learned to put words to what yeah. feeling was coming. So for me, if I'm in a place where there's some, some really controlling people, mm-hmm. I fall asleep. I'm just like, <laughs> I know it's a spirit of control. Uh, as yeah. a person, person i'm sure you've had this if you go somewhere Mm -hmm. prophetically and you get nothing you're just like how do i get nothing it's a religious spirit yeah the religious spirit (laughs) feel the prophetic so as you start practicing you start learning what the tells or or what the um another word for tells i don't know what what it seems like is you know how you yeah, yeah, that's really good. And for, for you who just joined in on the broadcast, welcome to the show. I'm giving away a copy of Donna De Silva's um, Devotional Prayers, Declarations, and Strategies for Shifting Atmospheres. And I'm giving away a copy of my book, Immersed in His Glory. If you share this at the bottom and you tag a friend, then I'll be picking um, winners to get a copy of each of those books. So there'll be two winners today. But we're talking about shifting atmospheres and picking up on the environment around us. And so we're not just picking up on demonic spirits as well, right, Donna? We could pick up on the angelic. We could pick up on the Holy Spirit's activity. We could pick up on, you know, obviously the demonic that people are carrying or subject to. Just like um, before, you know, I've had some visionary encounters. I'm a seer. I see a lot in the spirit. I get a lot of pictures. And and when God speaks to me, a lot of times it's in picture form. But for a while, I never saw an angel or never. And it's always at the eyes of the heart, the eyes of the imagination for me. And but there was a few times where I'd be I remember one time I was in my room, newly saved three, four years, and I felt a presence come into the room. But I, I wasn't scared and I didn't see anything with my natural or spiritual eyes. But I had a sense that it was an angel. I had a sense that it was an angel that entered into the room and I just felt peace. I knew I knew it was the Lord. I knew it wasn't anything demonic. He gave me that discernment because I've I've had demonic encounters and I, I knew it wasn't that. But I just said, Lord, I receive whatever whatever you're doing right now because angels are ministering spirits and they they minister to those who inherit eternal salvation. So so in that moment, I don't know what I received, but I remember feeling an utter peace that came over me. And I just said, Daddy, I receive whatever you're doing right now. And I moved on. And so there's been times I've just sensed, man, there's there's actually something beautiful and spiritual taking place right now here. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even if you go into a service or a conference, you say, well, the glory of God is pouring out. That's you, your senses. You're stepping into an atmosphere where the glory of God's really pouring out. So this is, this is a beautiful gift, but let's, let me, let me ask you this question. Um, you know, so many people shy away from messages like this because they don't want to talk about the demonic. They think that we're over spiritualizing it or there's, you know, you know, they've been burnt by a lot of ministries that talk about demons when they talk about Jesus. And so they've been a little bit burnt. So they don't want to talk about demons at all. You know, we are in a real spiritual war. Can, can you share a little bit about that? Ephesians 6, 12 makes it very clear that we're in a war and um, that we fight not against flesh and blood. But um, I find, and then I'll go on to that, but we fight against powers, principalities, authorities, dominions, spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realms. But what's funny is Ephesians 1 tells us that when Jesus was raised from the dead, he was seated in the heavens far above the powers, principalities, authorities, and dominions. And then we find out later in scripture that we are seated with Christ. So Um, It's not for me when I when I teach this, I tell everybody, I just want you to pay attention to this, that when you pick up in the demonic realm, it's just information. If you can keep it as it's information, then you don't get scared. You don't like, oh, no, what am I going to do? It's like, no, it's information. And because it's information, I can use that information or not, depending on what I'm asking God to do. And um, I can stay above it. So um, I, I find what happens is if you stick your head in the sand. You will be affected by the atmospheres, but you just won't believe it's not you. And you'll start fighting your brothers and sisters because mm-hmm. someone says something to you. And then all of a sudden you're mad at them and you're and oh, wait a minute. This is not them speaking. It's actually them reiterating what they're hearing in the spirit realm. Yeah, I find that when when people don't have a strong foundation in, in, the, in the word of God, really understanding who they are and who they carry, if we really understood that we carry the King of Kings, his presence lives on the inside of us, the one that is above every principality, power, might, and dominion, every name that's named, not only in this age, but in the one to come, like that is glorious, that is amazing, and that we've been co-seated with Christ above all these principalities and powers, like once that isn't just information, once that becomes revelation to us, and it goes from our head to our heart, and we begin to really believe it, 
trust in it and walk in that reality, I find that, you know, you don't, you don't come under as, as much when you step into an atmosphere, or get scared. Like there's people I know that um, they're kind of learning. They're, they're extremely prophetic and they're really sensitive, but because they don't have a good revelation of who they are, according to the word of God and the authority they carry, when they get into an atmosphere and they, and, and there's darkness, they just, they just come under, they just get crippled. They actually run the other way, but that's not the purpose of the gift. God doesn't reveal these things to us so that we run away and pray from a distance. God reveal these, reveals these things to us. We're there. He brought us there. Now we could shift that atmosphere like, you're, like, like you talk about in your book. Yeah, I do think that there's wisdom. I do yeah. think, you know, if the Lord tells you not to go somewhere, I think you shouldn't mm. go somewhere. I think yeah. if you believe, you should leave. I mean, so I do think there's wisdom involved in that. But we should never mm -hmm. flee from fear. Mm -hmm. Because the minute we partner with fear, we're not, in, in, we're not partnering with kingdom. We're partnering with the enemy. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, God, what do you want me to know about? What do you want me to do about this? What, what's my job? And a lot of times it's just information. He's just saying, I just want you to see it. So you don't agree with it. And hmm. I'm like, okay, so that's good. <clears throat> I have an yeah. interesting story. Uh, it came out right before my book. So I was able to put it in yeah. my was taking her son to um, a store in town. And this store had recently changed their bathroom policy that um, you get to, pick which bathroom you go into depending on what gender you identify yourself with okay mm, mm. and uh, so it doesn't matter how you dress it doesn't matter if you um, dress as a woman if you believe you're a woman you can go in the women's bathroom okay mm -hmm. so that's just under I don't have a comment on that I'm just telling you mm -hmm. that's the policy okay yeah so she's taking her son around the shop there's nobody talking to her nobody has said what a cute little boy you have and um, as they're going through, he's getting more and more talkative. And finally, he stands up in his shopping cart and he goes, I'm a boy, not a girl. Oh. Like, of course, you're a mighty man of God. And she looks around there. Nobody has said anything. Yeah. She realizes this. Oh, he's picked up the confusion, the gender confusion. Wow to choose who you are and he's hearing are you sure you're a boy because you're really cute i think you're probably a girl and he was like i am a boy wow so is real and i i wish christians would pay attention now oh my gosh that scares me no it shouldn't scare you it just it should give us information so what does that tell us it tells us that a lot of the stuff going on that that we're fighting it against is really a spiritual battle that we need to take authority over and we mm -hmm. need to train and teach. No, you, you have your identity. This is who you are. Let's use any other example we want. If this is too hot of a subject, but mm -hmm. you know, we, um, we need to know who we are in Christ so that when the enemy tells us who we are not, we are able to say, no, nah, I'm not listening to you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that example because kids too, kids, they just, we need to be, as parents, I've got a little girl who's two and a half and she goes to sleep to instrumental worship music from Corey Asbury. We have her come to our services. She lays hands on people. We always, we have her lead in prayers. We've had her lay hands on people. And, you know, so, so we, we are, we are teaching her about the spiritual realm and how real it is. And I believe as parents, we need to be so sensitive not to yeah, get freaked out if their kid says, I see a demon, I see an angel. What is this? What is that? What do I feel? This or that. We need to equip them. But first, I think we as believers, that's why, that's, that's why shifting atmospheres is so important in these different books and teachers that God are raising up because we first need to be equipped. We need to understand these things and walk them out so that we can teach our children how to walk these things out. That's key. Absolutely. It's key. Absolutely. It's so important that we, um, and we, we talk about it. We train them. I remember- yep raising my boys and trying to get them to see, you know, what was going on around them. And, you know, yeah, they thought mom was weird until they had <laughs> their own experiences where they're like, mm -hmm. Oh, you're not so weird, mom. Um, That's real. Mm -hmm. Real. And, you know, it used to be like, I would, I, I would tell my boys, I would call them and I would say, how are you doing? This is when they were um, younger and I was maybe working later. How are you doing? Oh, good. You know, I said, okay. Um, uh, how you doing in the, you know, are you struggling at all with anything? No, mom, I'm good. Really? You know, are you sure you don't have anything going on in this? You know, <laughs> And they'd be like, mom, how do you do that? Every time we struggle with something, you <laughs> us because I know what's going on in the spirit realm. Yeah, so yeah. I have a dream in the night that is sexual. I know my kids have had that same and maybe a different mm. type, but it's, it's tried to get them too. Mm. And so 
Timmy years later said, you know, mom, how you always warn us after hmm. the fact and catch us. How about you tell us ahead of time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When they got into their high school years, I would walk by their bedroom doors and I'd knock on the door and I'd say, gear up, gear up. And they'd be like, thanks, mom. And <laughs> yeah, that, amen. that, OK, there's something sexual being released and, and I need mm -hmm. to 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 gear up and keep my head down. And and they they did very well in that area of their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what you even said earlier about being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, if he says not to go into a certain area or if he says not to do something specific, then, but everything is about relationship. Jesus did what he saw his father doing. He spoke what he heard his father saying. And so there is this aspect of intimacy being where all fruitfulness flows, all of our, you know, the anointing and our, and our strategies and everything we're supposed to do flows from just knowing the Holy Spirit and being led by the Spirit. I find that I really like that you touched on that because that's that's really, really, really important. It's not being hasty. It's not feeling like, oh, yeah, the Bible says, let me just rah, rah, rah. It's really just, you know, you obviously have a grounding in the word of God. You know your authority according to the scriptures. But then it's it's a communion with the Holy Spirit where you say, okay, this is my strat. This is, th this is a good work that he predestined for me before the foundation of the world. I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to move forward in that. I think that's I think that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I would like, I wish, I feel honestly, like discernment is one of the least used gifts in the Bible today, in the body of Christ. Yeah. And I would, I would love for the church to pick discernment back up, but I want them to do it from a place um, where discernment isn't a, a, a way to um, accuse or a way to call out and embarrass, but a way to actually know, you know, what to do with it. And, um, my son taught me something amazing about that. We were, as I was training them, you know, about what's going on in the atmosphere, I would actually encourage them to guess, you know, what are you sensing and what does it look like? And so then they would have their own feel of what is going on. And, you know, some people see, a lot of people feel, you might hear, you know, con you know condemning thoughts or good thoughts and whatever, whoever's talking. Um, and we were in church one day and his hands were raised and I get to church and I put my hands up because I'd parked the car and I was in a little later. And he's like, mom, what's in the atmosphere? And instantly I knew it was sexual sin. And I'm yeah. like, in church, what is this doing in church? You know, yeah. not be here. And so I'm scanning the worship team because I'm thinking somebody up there must have, you know, done something they shouldn't have. And it wasn't coming from them. And so I'm like, I don't know what is going on. And Timmy says, mom, where's it coming from? And I'm like, who do you think? And he points to somebody that, that was there. And I'm like, I think it's from him too. Now, pausing on that, you can collectively be wrong, yep. right? Two of you have the same suspicion. The enemy could be pointing that. So that's what we did wrong is we just started being suspicious and pointing out to people. Um, and so I, and so I thought, what do we do? And Timmy's like, what do we do, mom? And I said, we'll pray. And as he's praying, I'm thinking, what do I do? Because it is definitely releasing sexual stuff into the atmosphere at church and yeah. worship. Do I go and confront him? Do I mm -hmm. ask him, hey, did you watch something last night you shouldn't have watched? Um, is there something, you know, do you need to repent? Yeah. And when I was about to confront, I actually send my husband to confront him. Um, yeah. My, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My son turned to me and said something that is a key to bringing discernment back in the church. He said, mom. I don't think it's coming from him. I think it's coming at him. Mm, mm -hmm. And the brilliance of that, because he's a seer, and to a seer, you see the demonic around. To a feeler, yeah. you see the demonic around. And yeah. I think that we did wrong in the earlier part of that, when in the 80s and 90s, when we were like, you know, come out and Jezebel. And it's like, we didn't discern that it wasn't yet on them. And so mm -hmm. we actually we were agreeing with the demonic to put it on them as well. Whereas now it's like, okay, so if it's coming from him, he needs to repent because he's open yeah. to do something. But if it's coming at him, we need to intercede. Yeah. And so many times when you intercede, you never have to tell the person what you've mm. rescued them from. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's important that we know, okay, God, is it from them or at them? Completely different way to handle it. <laughs> Yeah, that's really powerful because if you just go ahead and just confront somebody, you can kind of throw them off a little bit. Like, what do you mean? Like, people are getting that vibe from me and maybe they've never, like you said, never dabbled in that sin. They're not entrenched in it. And they get like, I hope people aren't picking this up for me. And then, right, if it's just coming at them, it's not something that they've allowed into their lives. You could just pray, intercede and see that thing broken off.
breaks. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really good. I heard somebody say this because discernment has been huge in my life, like regarding regarding the prophetic and regarding like discerning of spirits. Like I had a teacher who who raised me up in the discerning of spirits. She was a prophetic intercessor. So I already had that, but then she imparted so much to me um, um, in that area. And so I, I, I agree with you regarding like discernment. It's so key. It needs to come back into the church. And man, I was um, I just feel like this is such an important gift. That, that, that the body of Christ needs. And all of us, like you said, have access to this discernment. And so, but I heard this lady say this one time. I'm sorry, actually, I lost my train of thought for a second. I heard this lady say this one time, and it was such a blessing to me because if you're a prophetic person and if you, if you have discernment, I think um, a propensity that we need to overcome is being critical, being judgmental, I, you know, identifying that sin or that spirit with that person. And it was actually at Iris Global during Harvest School. And this lady came up and she said, love, I mean, discernment without love is sin. And I heard them say that. And I was like, oh, man, that's good. Because if you're prophetic and you have this mentality of what's right and what's wrong, you have a tendency to like just be judgmental and be critical and to tend to know that if you think you have discernment, but it's divorced from love. You, you, you don't have a passion to see that person set free. You don't have a heart of love to see that person set free. Then we need to realize we're, we're missing the mark here and our heart needs to be adjusted and we need to hear the heart of God. I would take it a step further and say that with you know, discernment and the prophetic without love is voyeurism. Wow. It's like, <laughs> if, you know, it's like you don't have a right to see into my life if you're not going to filter it through what Christ, you know, it's like mm. you're, you're just a voyeur. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. And, you know, this is this is so important. And so I know you're, you're also talking about in your book, literally, I know you go into certain regions and places. And I've noticed this as well. Like this city is there. There's something spiritual going on in this city. Obviously, homosexuality is, is, is strong in this area or um, a liberal mentality or some kind of perversion is strong in this area. Or, you know, so there's certain cities entrenched in, you know, specific forms of darkness. Like my, like my wife and I, we lived in Cambodia for about six months and there was heavy perversion there, obviously with sex trafficking, with children and all of that. And so how would you handle that? You know, in terms of shifting atmospheres, I know you go, you guys are intercessor, intercessors, you travel the globe going into different atmospheres. How could people like practically um, shift atmospheres in that sense? Well, you don't go and take on the regional spirit. You know, you don't walk up, you don't in Cambodia, get up there and start shaking your fist at the regional spirit because yeah. it, it's partnered with the people that are there, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, what you can do without any um, fear of flashback at all is you can actually be releasing the opposite. And so um, you, if we're like, you're talking about sexual perversion, so you would be releasing um, into the atmosphere um, proper intimacy in family, you know, and you would, you would walk and you would pray and cause we take the Holy spirit everywhere we go. And so if we're releasing the Holy spirit and we're releasing the attributes of kingdom, um, you know, we're not taking on a fight, but we're just, we're just inner, you know, we're just interceding and we're just like putting things into the atmosphere that need to be there. And then sometimes you need to, um, stand up in a social way and actually um, make a stand and but you need to do that in love and so it's important that you pay attention to what Jesus is wanting you to do and sometimes he doesn't want you to stand up in a social way he just wants you to intercede um, yeah. you, know, you just have to know what to do mm -hmm. we have some fun stories when my son was 17 he wrote a song that has an anointing to break suicide it's awesome. just proven and, and it's it he's 28 now and um, we still sell it and, and he's like, okay, mom, it's his first album. So he's not as thrilled with it, but the anointing on that album to wow. break, suicide, uh, we've taken it places. We've handed people his album and they have felt the demonic leave them just wow. the album. other people have listened to it over and over. And they, they say, I don't struggle with suicide anymore. We were mm -hmm. in a region that was struggling with suicide packs, like young kids. And, um, they were like, can, when you come, could you take care of that? And I'm like, we can give it a try, you know, okay, Holy Spirit, we got there and prayed through some stuff with the people, and my son played this song in the back, and um, they've not struggled with suicide at all since, hmm. so, I mean, the power of God to shift an atmosphere, um, it can happen in a day, and it can take time to display, yes. yes, you know, we don't, don't grow weary in doing good, yes, you know, because we will have the reward, and 
Um, mm. You know, we walk in and we think it has to shift today. Well, it can, but it might take time as well. Yeah. Yeah. And being led by the spirit, even when we were in Cambodia, there was um, my wife and I, we just felt in our heart, just go to temples and just walk around and pray and talk to people, spark conversations with them. We bless the homeless that were outside, the ones with like no arms that were begging and begging and begging. We just went around, we just blessed people. We just brought the opposite spirit. And I love like worship shifts atmospheres. Worship shifts atmospheres. You begin to sing the name of Jesus. You begin to worship him, even praying in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. You don't even need to do it out loud. You can do it under your breath or even internally because we're literally releasing the spirit of God. And so I'd, we'd go into this temple where people were shaving their head and offering their hair to the gods and they were releasing birds for luck and fortune and they were bowing down before golden statues you know and there was incense you know arising and, and so there was all this you know bondage religious bondage fear bondage um in that place and we would just go and i would sing this song there's every other god is an idol um, they cannot hear, they cannot see. There is one true living God and his name is Jesus. And I would sing this softly to myself, but it's amazing how you can get into an atmosphere, sense the dense darkness. And then as you just begin to worship, just worship, it doesn't have to be a huge worship service where you got the, you know, but just your personal worship to the Lord and things begin to shift around you. And you might not even see people, oh, I want to get saved. I want to get saved. But literally the Holy Spirit, now you're now releasing and partnering with the Holy Spirit. So now people are getting thoughts like, is this true? Is this real? Jesus, they're getting dreams of Jesus. We need to trust that as we release the presence of God, you might not see immediate results, but he's moving. He's, he's moving and he's. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Prophetic declarations, uh, speaking the word of God shifts atmospheres, yeah. um, declaring um, into the atmosphere, which I have a friend who said, you know, Donna, you've taught me this and I, I still don't pick up anything from the atmosphere. And I hmm. says, well, you don't have to because you walk in a room and you know what atmosphere you want. So you yeah. just get releasing what you want. So you don't <laughs> actually need to pick up what's going on because you've already discerned. Yeah in a different way, what needs to be there. Yeah. So yeah, that is so fun just to watch atmosphere shift. And, yeah. um, and to, and I've had so many people over the years have come back to me and said, we do what you, what you've taught us and it's working. It has worked. Um, lives are changed. Place, places are changed. Cities are being changed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's just really yeah. fun. Yeah, I was, um, I went, I've been to Cambodia twice. I lived there for six months, but first I went like an 18 day missions trip. I led a team there from Iris Global after a harvest school. And there was about 18 young believers and um, we're going to Cambodia. And I had this one guy on my team who was really strongly had like a hatred towards the Johns, you know, the people who were prostituting and doing all that. And understandable, okay, it's evil, it's wicked, it's demonic. But at the same time, they're a lost they're lost, they're lost and they're entrenched in darkness and God wants them saved too. And we were in, we were in a meeting and I just felt strongly impressed on my heart. We need to pray for these Johns. We need to see that they're lost. Um, sons and daughters of God, they're, they're, they're lost and God wants, so we need to, you know, so we prayed for that. We all held hands and we prayed and asked for God to bring them to a place of repentance for them to see the light. And literally they all looked at us. They were like, they were like, wow, this is so good. I feel so free because God was preparing their hearts for going into this atmosphere of darkness. So they don't have hate in their hearts, but they now have love for these. And I would, and I kept, and this is something I think is so key, especially when you're leading teams to areas where there's dense darkness or you're doing evangelism in cities where there's specific spirits and things taking place. I'm like, we need to be, we're, we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. We're not saying the devil's not there. That's, that's foolishness, but we need to be more aware of the spirit in us than the spirit around us. We need to know who we carry, whose we are. And it's amazing. I didn't have anyone on that trip come under the spirit, you know, when it comes to sickness, when it comes to depression, when it comes to, because when someone started to feel it, we all began to worship or we gathered around that person and began to pray. And so as the church, we need to be equipped. And that's why I'm so grateful for your ministry and the books that, that you're releasing, because we're, you know, we're equipping believers to know who they are and how to shift the atmosphere so they don't get, you know, affected and become a victim. It's, this is important. Yeah, I will say, too, that um, a great read before this is our Sozo book, because um, what you'll find is um, the Sozo book is actually the inner healing deliverance ministry um, that we do around the world. And it helps you take care of the hooks inside you. And mm. so if you have a hook inside you, um, the shifting of atmospheres will be harder in that area mm -hmm. because it, you have authority over what 
you have already won. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I can declare mm -hmm. if I, if there's, if I hate the Johns, you know, I can declare, 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 but if there, and if it's just because it's, it's, it's unrighteousness and then we ask for forgiveness, that's great. But if I have a hatred in there because I have a propensity in myself mm -hmm. to sin, I won't have authority over that. Mm. And so really we need to, I tell them one of the first steps is you got to get yourself clean inside so that everything in you actually looks like Jesus. Um, not that I have to be perfect, but that I can say, okay, I know what my hooks are so that if I come under that, Oh, wait a minute, that could be me mm -hmm. I need to clean that so that I have authority over it. Yeah. Mm, that's really good. That's that's definitely a key for sure. And so for those who are watching right now, thank you so much. We're about to get into a time of prayer. We always love to minister and pray for those who are watching. So please share this at the bottom. If you know someone who needs to hear this message, they're growing in discernment, they're growing in the prophetic, tag that person here at the bottom. We're about to get into a few minutes here. We're just going to minister as the Holy Spirit leads us. But um, so yeah, just... Hi, everybody who just, who tuned in, who is tuning in. A lot of comments here on the bottom. You have authority over what you overcome. Yes, Lisbeth, thank you for quoting that from the show. Felicia, Jackie, Jennifer, Blaine, Adele. Yes, Adele, it is going to be, you can access this later on my page. And I believe on Donna's page as well because she shared it. But you can access this later. It's on my YouTube channel as well. Um, Michael Lombardo, go to YouTube and you can go to our website. I'm going to put that link is actually in the, in the status section now. All of our Awakened Lives, well, 85% of them, the first few aren't on there, but are the archives are on there for you to see the ones with John and Carol are not. And, and this one will be on there. And just did one with Jennifer LeClaire that, you know, that all those are on there. And so, um, yeah. And so Donna, thank you so much for, first of all, yielding your life to the Holy spirit and allowing him to minister to you. I know he, he saved me. And he gave me such a love for him. And, and these gifts we have, we've just learned to steward them, right? He gives you a gift. And because you're passionate for him, you yield your heart to him. And then you, 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 you become a steward and he teaches you and he refines you. And there's a process. And for all you who are watching right now, if you have a gift from the Holy Spirit, whether it's prophetic, whether it's healing gift, and, and of course, every believer can walk in healing, every believer can prophesy. But if there's a strong gift on your life for preaching or ministry or even in the business realm and whatever it may be, there is a training process. And I love this scripture. It's Proverbs 21, 31. And it says, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. So we know that the victory is his. The victory belongs to the Lord. But that doesn't mean we sit around and expect him to conquer every demon that comes our way, okay? We have access to the victory of Jesus. We have his authority as believers. But we are his horses that he rides upon in victory, and we need to be prepared for the day of battle. And so that's why shifting atmospheres and sozo and immersed in his glory and all these different resources that are out there, all these teachers in the body of Christ that the Lord is raising up in this hour. And even in the past, I've read Smith Wigglesworth, John G. Lake, Catherine Coleman. Oh, man, like these Brother Lawrence, these books have helped train me. Um, in, in terms of walking out revelation in my life. So be taught of the Lord, get, get these teachings, listen to messages, spend time in the secret place. First and foremost, spend time in the secret place with the Lord so that you can be taught of him. Go through the training. Do not despise the day of small beginnings because the Lord rejoices in the process. That's that, that's what the word of God says. And so we bless you guys with that. But Donna, if you're, if you're feeling something on your heart prophetically, please feel free to share. Or if you just want to pray, impartation, whatever, whatever's on your heart. Yeah. I just want to break off depression. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to break off, um, kind of a, a hopelessness. I just, um, a lot of the people that are tuning in might not feel this, but then, um, I feel like some will like they, okay, we'll try this out. And a lot mm -hmm. of people feel like I've, I've tried to break free before, but they haven't. And so we just, yeah. um, speak to depression. We speak mm -hmm. to, um, the wounds inside that continue to open the door to discouragement and hopelessness, loneliness, I, all of that, you know, isolation. Yeah. And yeah. Papa, just release that when the people hear this message, they will, without even knowing that's what they tuned in for, they will be delivered of depression, loneliness, isolation, rejection, um, and I'm going to throw in performance and perfectionism as, as well, Papa, that, that you would, by your mighty hand, release um, these people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just thank you, Father. I feel, I see in the spirit like, um, like a knife in someone's back. 
it's like a knife in someone's back and um you've been backstabbed you've been you've been you've been hurt by a brother or sister in the lord i don't know if someone betrayed you with a kiss i don't think it was that kind of betrayal because i literally see it was like a someone stabs you right in the back and so you are trapped in bondage. It, it hurts you. When, you. when you release somebody, you're not saying, hey, listen, they, you know, what they did is right. You're not justifying their behavior, but you can't live your life with that knife in your back. It's going to hinder your relationship with the Lord, firstly. But secondly, um, you're not going to be able to walk into your destiny. You're going to be wounded. You're going to be picking up. You know, when you go to certain atmospheres, there's, there's rejection and there's things you're going to be picking up. It's going to affect future relationships. And I know that you don't want that to happen. You don't want future relationships to be affected because of one individual or several individuals that have hurt you. You don't want to give them that kind of power, okay? You don't want to give them power over your life where where literally what they did is affecting your life in the future and the relationships you have in the future. And so I just feel right now even a repentance needs to take place. Just, Father, change my heart right now. I forgive that person in the name of Jesus. It's not because what they did was right. It's because I'm a bigger person. It's because I know the love of God that forgives enemies and blesses enemies. And whatever, whatever their name is, I feel like even speak that out loud. I forgive Paul. I forgive Keith. I forgive Stacy, whoever it may be. I forgive that person. Just release it. You believe it in your heart. You release it with your mouth. We just break that off right now. We just pull that knife out in Jesus name. Do not let that affect you or harm you any longer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I just pray even with discernment for those of you who have this gift of discernment. And Donna, would you pray even those who have discernment and this prophetic gift that that would just increase in their lives or that doors would open up for them, like for schooling or whatever you feel led. But I just want to pray for the people that, that really feel like this is a message for me and I need to grow in this more. Yeah, so if that's you watching, I would have you put your hands on your tummy. Um, yeah. It's because I've heard that's where our spirit is. I mm. have no idea if that's true, but <laughs> let's put our hands on our, our tummy. And I would just say, um, Papa, I ask that you would put your hand um, on their hands and you would impart a greater revelation of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah. That we would actually connect into the wisdom that he carries, um, the knowledge that he carries, and that we would have an increase supernaturally of our discernment, that we would discern correctly, um, and we would actually be, get, be able to have better food, because mm. solid food we need to have. And so I thank you, Lord, that as you are touching us, you are growing yes. us up, so that solid food is palatable for us. We just increase discernment without fear of what you're going to see in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you so much, Donna, for joining me on the show today, um, taking the time out. And can you tell people, hey, if they've never encountered your ministry or don't know a whole lot about your resources and what you do, how could they stay in touch with you? Yeah, um, I have a DonnaDeSilva.com, a www.DonnaDeSilva.com. You have it listed on here because mm -hmm. my name is spelled differently. Um, you can look up uh, Stephen K. De Silva at prosperousoul.com. That is our stuff as well. You can get our resources at Bethel Church uh, mm -hmm. online, um, Amazon as well. But I love to throw in Bethel Church um, mm -hmm. to bless them for, for what they do for us. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you can get it any way you want. Um, you can ask questions online and, you know, we'll get back as soon as we can. I travel almost half the year mm -hmm. and so I don't get back quickly to mm -hmm. that. <laughs> but I, we do get back to you. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you again, Don. I got your, yeah, it's in the status section. You can just click right on her website link. Of course, you can go to Bethel, like she said, their website to get a hold of her resources. But also a reminder, I'm giving away a copy. If you share this at the bottom, now is your last chance because in a few minutes, I'll be picking um, an individual to get a copy of Prayers, Declarations, and Strategies for Shifting Atmospheres, as well as a copy of my book, immersed in his glory, a guide to experiencing and abiding in God's presence. And so, yeah, go ahead and share this. And I'm going to be giving away one to each individual. And so bless you guys. Bless you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to Awaken Live. Next week, I'm going to have some incredible guests in the near future. I'm going to have John Veal, Kim Meter, uh, Ryan the Strange, 
Um, the twin prophets, Akeem and Naeem Collins, I love them so much. And they're going to be joining me. And so you can go to YouTube. They're all archived on there. Our YouTube channel is under construction. So it's going to be looking a lot differently in the days to come. Major in uh, upgrades going on there. And then on our website as well, you can find out about our ministry. There's events up there um, as well as our archives for Awaken Live. So you could watch this afterward. But bless you guys. Um, follow Donna online. I know she's got her page, Donna De Silva. You can look her up on Facebook. She's got a bunch of followers there. You can be updated with her ministry. You can follow my page as well if you want daily encouragements as well as these videos you can get plugged into. But we love you guys. Bless you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this. It means a lot. There's a lot of voices out there. There's a lot of busyness in our day-to-day -day lives, but you are on this broadcast, and we really appreciate that. Thank you again, Donna. Look forward to connecting again in the future. Thank you. Bless you. Bye. Bless you. Bye, everybody. See you next time.